All right, the dreaded day has came. It's time for a tenant to move out. It's time for you to rehab the property to get it back up to listing. And today we're going to talk about the, the biggest cost or the most dreaded cost for a landlord. And in the previous video, we talked about, you know, being a landlord is about customer service. And this is where this element comes in huge because this is a huge cost to landlords. And that's turning over a property to get it ready to rent again. And depending on the areas like Florida, just like the, it's like a knife in my back every time I have to turn over a tenant in Florida because it costs a lot to turn over a tenant in Florida. And this is like one of the biggest pain points for landlords. And then that's why you always hear investors say you need to have reserves. You need to have reserves because bad things are going to happen. And, and that's that tenant turnover. So usually depending on a tenant. So I'll just use a, one property that I have. I'm just, I'm turning over right now. So I'm not going to go through the whole litany of other turnovers. And the reason why this tenant was leaving, it wasn't because they couldn't afford the rent. Um, they may was, you know, a couple of days late here or there, but it wasn't nothing egregious, like, you know, 15, 20 days late, maybe a day or two late. But the reason why was because the tenant was hard on the property, not the average uh, everyday wear and tear. So, you know, when we do the six month, three month, six month inspections, uh, we know we gave the tenant the property in one condition. We three months in and, you know, screen doors hanging off the hanging off the hinges. Uh, baseboards are chipped and broken. And it's only three months in. Six months in, it's getting worse. You're starting to see them uh, build bonfires non-safety regulated bonfires in the backyard, you know, because it's on, you know, a piece of land. Um, and then you start to see them do all these nuances and you just start seeing major deterioration on the property when I have a property on that same plot of land. And, you know, it's more people in that unit and that the other property is holding up pretty fine. And then so the reason why we moved on from the tenant is because they were just too hard on the property and we didn't want to deal with that. But fast forward, now that tenant is gone. No matter what, yeah, you will get a you will get their security deposit for the things that they messed up. But most of the time, I want to say 90% of the time, the deposit tenants pay when they move in does not cover the turnover costs of what it will cost you to you know, rehab the place to put it back up for rent. So I know a lot of, you know, new landlords think that, oh, I could just use the deposit and fix stuff. It doesn't cover it. That's why you need reserves. And with the deposit, only thing that you can charge them for is things that they've done that exceeds normal wear and tear. So it's not just, oh, they paid $1,500 deposit, they messed up this and... I get to keep the whole $1,500. It's you have to articulate and bring receipts on everything that they messed up with the price of how much it costs to fix. And then if it exceeds $1,500, then okay, you get to keep the deposit. But if it doesn't, you still have to return them the rest that's outside of normal wear and tear. And then usually, like I said, it always, even if you know you keep all the money the rehab to turn it over costs more. So with that, understand the, the biggest pain point for you as a landlord, as a property manager, as whatever you want to call yourself these days, a real estate investor is that turnover process. So keeping tenants in there longer, and that's always my goal. I always play the medium of raise rent to... Uh, extendability of the tenant. Will the rents get uh, risen? Yeah, but the percentage that it will get risen is based on the market and the how the tenant upkeeps the property. If I have a tenant that, you know, treats the property like its own, you know, have the upkeep good there, there's not a lot of calls about things broken or, or when we're doing the inspections, a lot of things are not broken and everything is pristine. I'm least likely to raise their rent. How I would raise just a normal tenant that just don't care. So understand that balance because every time a tenant moves out 
and you have to replace it with a new tenant, you will be coming money out of your pocket to make that happen. Alex, what you got? I think the most, like the biggest pain point or the one I don't want to see as a landlord is plumbing. I think plumbing is like the only one that, well, I mean electric too, but I really haven't had electrical problems. But plumbing is one I try to, or I mean, you can't even try. There's nothing you can do, but I I, I, I dread it. That, that's the word. I dread having to fix any plumbing problems. Now, the guys I've got, they're great with, you know, plumbing issues, but I've had tree roots in the in the toilet where it drains. Uh, I've had that come up. I've had, you know, kids putting toys down the drain. I've had stuff like that, you know, and it's, you know, Kirby loves kids. He'll tell you all about what they can cause and damage. <laughs> That's the stuff that I dread is people not watching their kids because, I mean, even down, I've seen you know kids stuff toys down the sink in the kitchen in the bathrooms, and obviously when you go to like change out the sinks and all of that, like the faucets and stuff, and, or the sink itself, like you got to pull the pipes out and you can see all the crap come out. But that causes backups, that causes clogs, especially if it goes into a septic tank and then you got to drain that. So it's just a bunch of like headaches, and especially too with like this duplex. Luckily, they caught the issue and they were able to fix it. But like the sink and the kitchen was clogged and they were connected to both units. So because of one tenant clogging the sink could cause the effect on the other tenant. So then both are impacted by that issue. So that's I think that's the biggest thing that I dread is is plumbing issues. All the cosmetic stuff, it can be a pain, but it's. It's easier to fix stuff that you can see than what you can't see. Landlords, uh, I'm talking to you and tenants. If you're a tenant of a property and you want to get into the landlord business um, or real estate in business, whatever you want to call it. I hate the word landlord. Um, I prefer a tenant to call me and tell me every problem that's going on than for them to wait. And, and I'm gonna tell you why tenants wait. So if there's a small leak under the sink, they're probably gonna wait. And the reason why they're gonna wait because they don't know how to take care of a house because they probably never owned a house. But the second reason why is because they know it's gonna cost money to fix and they're worried that the landlord is going to raise the rents on them because they are coming out and fixing things. Again, back to the customer service element. This is conversations you should be having at the before the tenant moves in. If you see it, call it out. Because the truth of the matter is, is if that small leak starts happening and the tenant don't call you, it's going to become a big problem because you're going to have to change out the, the vanity for dry rot, for mold. And then that, you know, $50, $25, or just a turn of the wrench to tighten up the uh tighten up the faucet or the drain will turn into hundreds and thousands of dollars of issues, especially if you got to get more remediation. Those small nuances, that's why I always say, if you see it, call it out. Yeah, will it be a pain in my butt because you're getting the phone calls? Yeah, but i rather, because for me as a owner of the property, it's an investment for me. For other people, it's just a place that they can live temporarily, you know, for a couple of years and they're going to move in and move out. But you want to protect the asset and lower your costs over the long term as much as possible. But call it out and don't be persuading your tenant to not call you when there's issues. Don't be talking, about, oh, I'm going to have to raise the rent, all the money you're costing me. Don't do none of that. Because if you're in this game for the long term, you would rather have the call than not have the call. I've had tenants that, that's done both. Called out everything and not called out anything. And the ones that don't call out anything cost me more money in the long term. Over that year span, their lease is in it. And I mean, a lot more. It's not even, I mean, it's going from $300 for people that call me to eight to twelve to $15,000 for people that didn't call me. And Lord, Lord knows that that deposit ain't going to cover that problem. So customer service is huge to stop you from having the big expenses in the long term. You got to have these conversations. Oh, With all that being said, 
I stole I stole Alex Thunder with all that being said. We'll see you in the next video. Y'all have a good one. Cheers.